Yep, I did it again. I went thrift shopping today, and I brought back stuff. You can tell I do this a little too often, especially when I'm on break from college. Uh, so without further ado, here's what I got. First thing I got was this DVD player. But it is not just any DVD player. It is an Oppo DVD player. Which, from what I understand, these are supposed to be really good. Um, paid all 15 bucks for it. Which, eh, as DVD players go at the local Goodwills, it was maybe a bit much, but compared to what this goes for on eBay, it was still a steal. Um, if we look at the back here, one of the more obvious interesting features is that it has direct analog surround output. Which I'm not entirely sure what I'll do with that, but it's one of those things that's interesting to have. And it also has a DVI output, interestingly. Um, I guess that's supposed to be in place of an HDMI output for app conversion, but I don't know. It also has this, uh, if I can get the camera to focus on it without a shadow, this DCDI function. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but I hear it um, works wonders on the picture, apparently. So I'll have to try this out at some point. Now, as you can see, there is one thing missing from this, though, and that is the remote. Unfortunately, no matter how hard I looked in the store, I could not find the remote to this thing. So, I'm going to have to come up with some alternative way of controlling it, though given that these are often used in home theater setups, I might end up just sticking an IR blaster right here and controlling it using a computer with LIRC or something, and using it maybe as part of a uh, larger control setup. Um, but we'll figure out what, exactly how that will work another time. Uh, so, beyond that, I also found can get the cords untangled. This Archer brand, it's interesting that they that Radio Shack stuck this under their Archer brand, they're not realistic, but whatever. Um, it is a special effects switcher. Now, I'm not 100% sure how this is supposed to be operated, but it looks like you feed two different uh, composite video and stereo audio sources into it, and you can fade them out, probably dissolve from one to the other, or do little wipes, and things like that. Um, Interesting thing, it was, I'm sure, designed for home movie editing. But it could be something interesting to play with, especially if I end up doing maybe a live streaming show or something at some point in the future. Now, moving along, the next thing I got, this is kind of heavy. Uh, heavier than it should be, really. <sighs> a CD player. But not just any CD player. It is, if my camera will focus on it, pick this up so you can see it, a Nakamichi CD player. It is an OMS-3A model. It is ginormous. Now, I wish it was a Nakamichi cassette deck, but I did not have such luck. In fact, given this showed up, I would not be surprised if a cassette deck had showed up previously and I missed it. But frankly, this is the first time I've ever found anything by Nakamichi at one of the local thrift stores, so it's definitely a rather interesting find, although I think the um, tray closed sensor is broken on this, so we'll have to, I'll have to pop it open and have a look. Um, well, moving right along, I also got this old Gravis joystick. It's a very simple model, just two buttons here, button at the top. Um, it's got adjustable levels of self-centering. You can make it flop around if you really want it to. Although I don't know what the point of that is. Um, paid seven bucks for this at the local Goodwill. Which, given that Goodwill's prices, is probably a bit much, but it's the only one they had that would suit the, uh, sort of, sort of gaming I tend to do. You know, the other ones they had, which were actually, oddly enough, were a little cheaper. But it goes to show how well they can price things. But they were the really fancy ones that look like, you know, an airplane throttle or something. So it's like, you know, it, it way overkill for what I wanted. So I'm just, you know, and I figure it would be hard to play, you know, old, you know, you know, um, what am I trying to say here? Um, play, you know, retro side scrollers and things like that with something that complicated. Whereas I would rather have just a simple joystick with these couple buttons on the side to use for 
controls as opposed to having just buttons all over this thing and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it also, the other interesting thing is it is a game port joystick. So I'll have to use this with some of my older computers, maybe that um, old gateway machine up there. Uh, I think it's sound, it has one of the uh, Sound Blaster cards that has the game port on it. So I'll have to try that out after I clear all that crap off of it. Um, and the last thing I got, and now this, I think, personally, I think is the most interesting thing I get found. This was a VidPro, uh, the co-producer, all-in-one transfer device. It lets you transfer all kinds of film-related stuff to, they say, the videotape, but that's just because that's what around, was around at the time. What this actually is, it's essentially nothing more than a box of mirrors <laughs> and lenses. Basically what you do is, let me pull this thing out so I can show you. Yeah, it came complete in box for four bucks at the local Unique, which is a, a chain of thrift stores around here. Here's the device, which I wish you could see this better, but I don't have great lighting in here. What this will do is, in the case of what I, and I got this to transfer, to try to transfer some old um, um, 8mm and 16mm films that my that my dad has from when he was growing up. Um, what you do is you get out your film projector and you align it to project onto this little panel here. And then inside here there's a little mirror. And then you align a camcorder, which of course now you can't see anything, but with this lens, like I'm doing with my camera here, and I'm not sure if you can really see that. But let's see if I can hold this up to the light. You'll see that you can see the screen through there. And with some clever zooming and things like that, you can get the projection to show up on your camera. Now, the other thing this does, besides that weird project onto camera thingy, is on the back here, this thing pops out. And you can also place uh, prints of uh, photos that were taken on a film camera up against here and put them behind this little piece here. And there's a little fluorescent light in here that of course I don't have the batteries in here right now so I can't really demonstrate that but you put the photo in, put this thing in front of it and then you can turn on the light from this button over here and then align your camera with this top lens and then you can the idea I think was originally you would put like an old uh, tape based camcorder up to it and make slideshows with it but now it's pretty much, that's pretty much entirely obsolete because you might as well just throw it on a scanner. But the film portion of this could still be interesting, especially since because this is entirely optical, you could stick an HD camera up to that and probably still get HD quality. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. So yeah, I'm, at some point I'm going to have to try that out. Um, maybe at some point I'll do a video about how that works. Um, but meanwhile... I have to <laughs> probably bring the CD player up onto the workbench and figure out what to do about its tray issue. Um, but that, again, will be a separate video. So either way, for now, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll get more uh, stuff up about each of these things as is necessary slash uh, time allows slash whatever else. <laughs> so yeah.